<laughs> Thank you, Gina. You're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for being present today. And um, yes, I'm back, you know, after just about two weeks. For those of you who actually had uh, the privilege of listening to my talk uh, the last time, uh, it was more on how we sharpen our brain a bit more uh, better than uh, usual. But today, uh, I will focus more on brain detoxification and more importantly, how, you know, we have worked with Avita. Uh, to come up with this uh, new, new invention called NGF and how it can play a role not just in brain detoxification, although today this is the main focus, but also in the entire uh, nervous system, including the autonomic nervous system. All right, so without further ado, uh, just let me uh, go through what uh, I have to go through today. Just as I mentioned a few weeks back, I think um, for our brain to function or for anything to function, most of the time, right, we have to make sure that we have to take care of the plant ends of anything. Like for example, a pencil, right? Why does a pencil get blunted? Because of you know constant usage and things can get worn out and can get very, very blunt. So what NGF does, or what we can do for you, is basically providing you with the necessary means, all right, as I explain to you how to do it, to make sure that you can sharpen it, sharpen your, your brain and your nervous system a bit more better, as well as to make sure that you maintain that functional uh, impact in your brain as well as your autonomic nervous system. The reason why we're focusing on the brain and the nervous system is that, you know, statistics has really shown that one in every seven person in this world, all right, totaling to about one billion dollar, uh, one billion people, one billion people in this world suffer from some form of neurological diseases. And even for those of us who are well, who feels that we don't have any form of neurological diseases, we also have to take care of our brain and our nervous system because that is so important for us to maintain it in the optimum state. Now, before I go into any uh, neurological issues or discussion, I just want to draw a question and ask the audience. You know, how many of you think that what is our maximum lifespan? What is the human maximum lifespan? All right. Now, I think it has been de debated before. Some things that, you know, we can live up to about 150 years. That is a very, very, very long time because most of us, you know, if we can live up to 90 years or even 100 years, it's already considered a very, very long lifespan. But now, I just want to let you know that statistics has shown it that we can live up to 115 years, not 150, not 150, but 115 years. But even that, at 115, 115 years, 115 years, now, that is still a long, long lifespan. How many of us now are only in our 50s and 60s, maybe even 70s? Now that means to say that we still have about a good 40 years you know, to live. And how are we going to make use of these 40 years? How, how do we make sure that these 40 years is going to have the greatest quality of life? That is most important. You know, being, being alive is not the most important, but being alive and having the best quality of life, that is more important. And that's why today, you know, as we age, all right, we must age not just gracefully, but we must age healthily. But unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, uh, one very, very uh, big challenge for aging is that as we age, chronic disease comes about. Many, many kinds of chronic disease come about. And many of these chronic diseases are related to our brain and nervous system. Now, even today, if you are not aging, 
that fast. I mean, that uh, you're not aging in 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 the in the sense that okay, if you are above fifty years, you are above sixty years. Even for the youngsters, people who are still schooling, for example, most of us have kids, you know, who are in the twenties, in the thirties. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised that you know um, most of them, all right, age much faster than the predecessor. That means to say that for those of you who are already in the twenty years old, but they are now basically, you know, already in the thirties or forties. So that is very, 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 very concerning to all of us because we do not want even you know teenagers to age faster than they should be. And it is a fact that the young are aging much faster because of lifestyle, because of even the food. Because a lot of times we eat, uh, you know, those uh, junk food. We eat um, uh, hormone uh, fo uh, foods with hormones, and that actually speed up the growth even in young people. So the next thing I want to discuss is that as part of the aging process, even the accelerated uh, aging process, you know, we suffer from memory loss. How many of you, you know, even though, you know, uh, you may deny it, but we do have lapses in memory loss. So when we do have memory loss, uh, what is the main culprit? What causes memory loss? Is it due to aging alone? Or not well, scientists has been trying to you know grab about this and find you know uh, reasons you know experiment on it yes you know memory is not just due to aging alone nowadays memory loss could be due to many many factors all right could be genetics and could be many many others a lifestyle but most importantly you know it's about how well you take care of your brain and how well we can achieve the next thing we want to say is brain detoxification because a lot of times our brain are being occupied with too many unnecessary ways and if it's not detox properly we get memory loss so this relates to what we're going to discuss today which is brain detoxification and as i mentioned to you it's not just only the old people that have memory loss even though now teenagers and it is increasing percentage of people now having a, a growing trend of people having what we call fading memory. Now, that brings to a very, very important, I would say, uh, comment or even statement today. Now, each and every, every one of us, we have, I mean, the world is fair. We only have one brain. Every person has only one brain. And if you can see the brain there, you know, there are various functions. You see the diagram there right from attention to speech to smell to touch to taste even for vision right and movement coordination even you know how you breathe and you know your heart rate all these things all right is part of the brain function and you know just imagine if let's say any part of this brain becomes uh, non-functional and that will affect all right basically the function of the whole body so importantly to note is that you know unlike some of some parts some other organs inside our body whereby there is some level of regenerative ability regenerative ability that means they're able to recover and also to to actually replace with new cells and new tissue the brain is in general non regenerative in general non-regenerative that means you cannot create new brain cells or nerve cells so if that is the case now every one of us has the total responsibility of taking care of our brain and the thing is that how are we going to maintain that brain because you know the brain can be quite fragile can be quite vulnerable if you don't maintain it well so how do we maintain that is the question i'm going to pose to every one of you right it is a very very common question but it's not a question that you can easily answer right so now maybe i just want to let you know that in order for us to maintain our brain our brain our nervous system key is to achieve what we call brain detoxification brain detoxification means you have to remove all the unnecessary things and the to uh, toxin poison from the brain first Right, all the waste okay that could potentially 
harm your brain, you have to remove them first before you can even talk about adding nutritional uh, 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 components to the brain. Okay. So that brings me to the question on the, the invention, because we feel that, you know, brain detoxification is a big issue. Brain detoxification actually affect uh, 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 a lot of people in this world and including our autonomic nervous system. All right. Now, because of this problem, all right, then that actually is the motivation behind why I decided as a scientist work with Avita in collaboration with Avita to develop a unique, a synergistic formulation comprising of basically brain active substances, brain active substances. And I will describe to you later on what is this, what are all these brain bioactive extracts, bioactive substances, all right? And one of the main, main, main function of this product, of this invention is on brain detoxification, right? As mentioned to you, it is very important to do brain detox, but how do we do it, right? You can easily do, you can easily achieve that by just, you know, understanding what the product Evita NGF can do for you. So as you can see from the box of the Evita, right? Uh, basically, you know, it is a, a synergistic formulation, right? Making, uh, uh, comprising, you know, of this very premium, uh, what we call bird nest extract. And it's not the only extracts that uh, this product, this invention has. It has uh, uh, actually what we call the purple choke berry, the copa, as you can see from the, from the box, sage extract, natal kinase, and beta glucan. Okay, now how does all this thing comes about? What is the relevance of this in relation to the formulation? I'll discuss this to you later. All right, but now just remember that, you know, now we have come up with this invention five to six years ago. And over the last five years, you has impacted a lot of people with a good testimonials and not just testimonial, but I think it's more importantly is to help people, you know, find good, what we call ways of maintaining their brain through brain detoxification and, you know, uh, maintaining a very strong autonomic nervous system. Now, perhaps, you know, I want to actually give you the underlying mechanisms on how this invention work, because you must understand that behind a, a invention or a great invention, you know, there must be some underlying uh, mechanisms on how this mechanism started and how does it work. So basically, you know, the invention started by understanding, by first understanding that you, we must have a good, uh, uh, what we call grabs of uh, the uh, knowledge uh, relating to the molecular uh, uh, events that's happened in nerve cells present in the brain and present in the autonomic nervous system. So what is really happening inside the nerve cell? That is crucial because for every disease that starts, it all starts from a single nerve cell. So by understanding the molecular events or even you know, the normalization and intervention of nerve cells, we would understand you know, how we can keep our brain cells or our nerve cells uh, better and also at the same time prevent disease, diseases. So if you just look at this diagram, I just want all of you to understand because I'm not going to train you to be scientists, but just understand this very simple concept. Now inside the nerve cell, there is this thing called the nerve gene, nerve gene, okay? A nerve gene or the nerve DNA. So the nerve DNA actually give rise to a nerve function. So always remember that, you know, for a function to happen inside the nerve cell, it's like a software, you need to have the necessary, what we call um, a, 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 a software to make it happen, all right? So in this case, we call this a neural gene, as you can see here. So a neural gene, so, uh, it, can, it can be a good neural gene, it can be a bad neural gene, okay? But most importantly, the concept is about, you know, how we can better 
you know, activate or what we call turn on those good genes related to neural function and turn off, turn off the bad genes that is related to neural uh, uh, cells uh, 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 malfunction. All right, so it's all about balance. It's all about balance. It's all about having all the good things and removing all the bad things or reducing or inhibiting those bad events from happening. So that is what and is central to what NGF is all about. So after understanding that you know, a basic nerve cell is very dependent on the molecular event within this, its DNA and its genes, then it is not surprising that you know, we therefore can actually link neural disease to genetics or even the DNA that a particular person has. So certain diseases like neurological diseases, for example, uh, including dementia, for example, including autism, for example, all right, uh, it can be linked to genetics. That means it can be hereditary. That means it can be passed down from, by, uh, from our parents to us. Okay, so if it's genetically linked, there is really nothing we can do about it because we are born with those genes. We can either bless with good genes or bless with not so good genes. But nonetheless, okay, it is important for us to identify that, oh, if we are blessed with a certain kind of gene, you know, how are we going to better manage? How are we going to better manage, all right, even though you have inherited bad neural genes? If you have inherited bad neural genes, what are you going to do with it? That is the question, all right? That is also not just a question, but also the answer you want for yourself, all right? But we know that, okay, genetically, it actually causes you to have certain, what we call, as here it was mentioned, an inappropriate function of the gene due to an impaired electrical impulses throughout the brain, throughout the nervous system. You know, our brain to our nervous system is basically run by electrical impulses. It's like electrical wires. They are electrical wires like, you know, running all over our body. They are what we call the nerve. The nerves are all running in, uh, throughout our body. So the thing is that these are electrical impulses. But if those electrical impulses are impaired, then it could lead to a pathological event. Pathological means a event that leads to a disease. Okay, so very simple. All right, disease that we see uh, in, in in people like Parkinson's, dementia, you know, and, and even multiple sclerosis can be genetically linked. But if it's genetically linked, then what is the strategy for scientists, right? Or even for drug developers to circumvent that, what we call genetic problem. Circumvent means to solve that genetic problem. Is it in the first place solvable, all right? Now, of course, uh, I'm not saying that we completely solve a genetic issue, but what we can do is to reduce the impact, reduce the impact of a lousy gene that is happening inside our body. A lousy gene means a bad gene. We can reduce that impact. We may not be able to remove, but we may be able to reduce. So, all right, as we can see, you know, uh, genetics is a hotly researched topic all over the world. Right, scientists all over the world, you know, they try to understand, you know, uh, uh, the different aspects of neurological disorders, you know, and now, you know, there are very, very high end diagnostic tools and even uh, 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 discovery of new targets, meaning new gene, because a lot of genes are still not, are still not uh, founded. So now more and more genes are founded. Okay, and these scientists become more and more understand more and more about our brain because there is still a big black box out there that we do not know much of our brain but more importantly is that science have allowed us to understand our brain much better and scientists now has one of the best tools to do that all right and it's basically 
we are re residing on those principles. It means the those principles of you know how scientists you know look at disease and how we can uh, uh, circumvent or how, uh, how how we can resolve the problem of genetic diseases. Okay, we use that those principle in the invention of our Avita and GF. So, um, I think I just want to say it very, very simply, just to make sure that all of us understand. Okay, very simple. It's just that, you know, every one of us, if you are related uh, to have some genetic brain disorders, that means to say that we, all right, or that those people fail to produce enough of certain protein that influence development and function. That means we may have suffered from a deficiency a deficiency of a particular protein that is necessary for brain function. That's it, all right? Including brain detoxification. We may have certain uh, uh, deficiency of protein that allow us to have proper brain function, brain detoxification. As simple as that, right? That is genetic disease, including autism, including autism. And, and, and child related uh, uh, brain diseases. All right, so I, I just want to mention that, you know, all these kind of diseases to a lot of doctors, a lot of scientists out there, they may not have the answers. They may not have the answers of what we call cure. Uh, cure is a big word. They may not have a cure for a genetic disease because there's still so much things to understand about our brain. But today, it is not about finding a cure. It is about finding a way on how to reduce the impact of a bad genetic gene related to your nerve and your brain. So that is really the main purpose of NGF. NGF is not a drug. It is not meant to cure, I mean, yet at this moment in time, but it is meant to resolve, to solve what we call the deficiency of certain proteins that is lacking in an individual due to a genetic defect. That is what NGF aims to do, all right? So you can see here, all right, on this diagram, it's just to let you know that there are various uh, genetic uh, 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 disorders, uh, scientists already discovered, and they even can uh, uh, identify at which part of the gene, you know, uh, uh, these are very molecular, so I don't want to bore you with that. But because that we already have that kind of foundation, we already know that, okay, you know, of what kind of genetic disease is located and what kind of uh, 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 gene uh, locus, and we can now then identify which are the protein that is in deficiency or in, uh, in abnormal amounts, it can be in excessive amount also, then we try to balance that. Basically, we use a very, very uh, natural way of balancing. It's all about balancing, all right? If you have too excessive of bad gene, you just reduce it. If you have too deficient of certain good gene, you just increase it. It's as simple as that. That's what NGF, uh, Vita NGF product or invention aims to do. So with this, I just want to highlight to you, this is a diagram, just to let, let you know, it's like a map. It's like a map of a nerve cell that you can see here. Inside there is a lot of protein, you know, doing its work for the nerve cell. Okay, and this is relating to a Parkinson's disease uh, 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 gene, all right, a Parkinson's disease gene. So today, scientists may have mapped out, you know, the uh, uh, few proteins that is related to Parkinson's disease. And because we already know what are those proteins, therefore it is not difficult for us to, you know, replace those 40 protein or to reduce those 40 proteins. So that is basically what NGF, Evita NGF aims to do, all right? So you can see here whether the color is in green, blue, yellow, especially in green and blue, those are the protein that is found to be associated with Parkinson's disease. So I'll just show you, so for example, for dementia, it will be another diagram. For autism, it will be another diagram. For multiple sclerosis, it will be another diagram. You know, and, and we, we can show that, you know, some of these diseases are really genetically linked. That means they're linked to bad genes. Uh, right, in this case, it's an autism. 
is relating to an autism. If you don't understand the diagram, that is okay, but it's just to show you that inside the nerve cell of an autistic child, autism, autistic child or children, they are found to be lack of certain, what we call protein called the neurologin. So that neurologin is missing in their, in their cell and therefore they cannot function as normal and they become autistic. So all you need to do is to find out, you know, uh, proteins that can replace neurologin in the patient or in the, in the child. We may be able to reduce the effect of autism then. All right. Of course, there is still other challenges, but the fundamental problem is to address what is lacking and you replace it with normal copies and amounts. Next, I want to go into the issue of immunology. The immunology is extremely important and a lot of times is related to what we call detoxification. Detoxification. Immunology is detoxification link. So I explained to you, all right, because as we age, all right, our immune system, including our autonomic nervous system, autonomic nervous system, including the brain, okay, we actually uh, 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 actually can promote what we call micro, micro Microglia senescence. Okay, now there is this word called microglia senescence here. Microglia, you have to imagine that it is like a cell that protects the nerve cell. Understand? It is a cell that protects the nerve cell. Okay, why you need a cell? Why does why does nerve cell need other cells to protect? Because nerve cells are very vulnerable and very fragile. All right, so it needs a what we call a protector cell. And in this case, the microglia cell is the protector cell. So just imagine today, right, inside the brain there is microglia cells. Okay, and the microglia cells are protecting your nerve cells within your brain. So imagine that, you know, as we age, there is this thing called senescence. Senescence means becomes age and non-functional. And because of this, all right, it drives what we call an event called neuroinflammation. Neural inflammation means, you know, when the cell does not, form a, does not function normally, it goes into an abnormal mode called inflammation. And inflammation is an event actually primarily aimed to protect you, but if it is in excessive amount, it actually harms you. So when you have too much inflammation, it's not a good thing because inflammation allows your cell to eat your own cell. Don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, inflammation will promote your own immune cells to eat your own organ cells, including your brain cells. And that is not good. That is not good. Okay, so now we want to see that, you know, with now the advent of technology, lifestyles and things like that, you know, each and every one of us has very diverse genetic background. Each of us have very different exposure to infection. Now we all know what is COVID, right? COVID infection is just one example of infection. There are many, many other infections that can actually comes into our body, comes into contact of our body, all right? And this could actually influence molecular event or immunological event within our body. It can actually happen inside our body. And what happens is that, all right? When our immune system go haywire, then our neuro, our neuro uh, uh, system will also go haywire. First, immune system go haywire. Haywire means it goes into a disarray. And then of course, your nervous system will also go into disarray because of inflammation. And that will lead to neural disorders, neurological disorders. All right, so I just want to encapsulate this slide to say that, you know, first of all, our immune system age, and also coupled by the fact that now we all suffer from dyes metabolism. What is dyes metabolism? It means to say that, you know, each and every one of us don't have a balanced diet and or worse still due to other uh, uh, causes like um, infection or even drug uh, usage, uh, it leads to what we call diet metabolism. That means your metabolism going into this array. That means your metabolism is no longer normal. Metabolism is about how the biochemical reactions happen inside the throughout your body, all right, including your diet, including your diet uh, uh, metabolism. And of course, we have inflammation. So these three events add up together, it can lead to 
more and more diseases, more and more risk of getting diseases. So I want to introduce you a new term here called, you know, immunosenescence. Immunosenescence means your immune system go into a aging mode and no longer functional. And there is another thing called inflame, infl inflame aging. Inflame aging means you have an abnormal production. As we age, we have an abnormal production of what we call cytokines and aptipokines. These are all molecules that can trigger inflammation inside your body. And this, in the normal circumstances, they are good molecule. But when, it, when we age, this actually come back and haunt us and actually produces uh, what we call cytokines and aptidokines, which is no good for us and actually starts to harm our nerve cell, starts to harm our autonomic, nervous, autonomic system, starts to harm our brain. And that is when our brain detox, brain detoxification is so important because you have to remove the unnecessary inflammation that is happening in the body. Imagine if today your brain is filled with a lot of enemies called the immunoinflammation molecule. Your brain now is filled with inflammation molecule, which is your enemy. What must you do? The first thing you need to do is to remove them, is to remove your enemies. And this can only be achieved by having the right, what we call protein, that is associated with our invention, NGF, a Vita NGF. And when you have a, a right amount of the Vita NGF, you will have no problem about removing all these enemies, these inflammation molecules inside your brain. And because of this, you will recover much better and you have less chance of getting a disease, a neurological disease. So, all right, with aging, microglial cells become senescent cells, as I mentioned to you, the, the microglial cells are the protective cell. They become aged, they can no longer protect you, and not only they, they cannot protect you, but they become even a problem for you. That means they release inflammation molecules to you, and this is the time whereby you really need what we call brain detoxification. Brain detoxification. You need to have ability to remove those inflammation inside your brain. Okay, it's not just removing the waste, but also in removing the inflammation inside your brain. That is important. Okay, so, and of course, you know, as we age, our mitochondria, which play a role in energy providing, because you need energy, all right? Nerve cells need energy, and that actually, you know, a drop, and because, of, uh, because when it drops, uh, the energy level of your nerves, energy level uh, of the nerve cell drop, that will lead to even more inflammation. So again, again, and again, and again, I just want to let you know that, all right, immunology is very important for you as a brain because it causes neuroinflammation. And now the key here is to remove neuroinflammation and in the process, what we call the brain detoxification. Brain detoxification, okay? So here is just to let you know, all right, a very clear way of, you know, how a normal person have good brain detoxification and also good neuroprotection. Neuroprotection, neuroprotection as well as brain detoxification. So in this case, you can see on the left diagram, there is a young and healthy individual. Okay, you have a very good, very healthy microglial cell. The microglial cell is like a protector cell. It protects the neuron from all other events, including inflammation including your own immune system, not just the virus, but it also protects you from inflammation. So under normal circumstances, your nerve cell looks very healthy, you can see. But if you look at the right diagram, and you can see that, look, what happened to your nerve cell? The nerve cell is called the neuron cell. What happened? Because now you have what we call an aging microglial cell. That means now the protector cell is no longer able to protect you. And worse still, the protector cell releases inflammation molecules to the environment, to the environment. And then now the environment has a lot of immune factors, inflammation factors that can now attack, you know, allow your own immune system to attack your own brain. How painful is that? Imagine, imagine your own immune system 
attacking your own brain. Can that even happen? Yes, it could happen. It could happen. As we age, listen carefully, every one of us, every one of us, as we age, our immune system will attack our own brain cells. So how are we going to reduce that? How are we going to reduce that? All right. Now, I just want to let you know that inflammation does not just start from the brain. Inflammation can start from the gut, your intestine. So from the small intestine, you know, uh, uh, large intestine rather, from the large intestine where there's lots of bacteria, good bacteria, bad bacteria. But now in this case, we talk about bad bacteria. So when there's a lot of bad bacteria, it leads to what we call inflammation because the body needs to remove the bad bacteria. And there is an overdrive of inflammation. And one of those bad inflammation protein that is formed is called the syncytial, alpha syncytial protein. Okay? And this, uh, uh, this uh, alpha uh, 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 synuclear protein, uh, protein, then it starts to form, and it's what we call a bad protein. It is a bad protein. But under normal circumstances, the bad protein is only present in your intestine. But when there is inflammation, over-inflammation, the bad protein actually can go from migrate from your intestine all the way to the brain and even you know, open up the brain, blood brain barrier for, for, for the bad protein to go inside the brain. Not just the brain, it also goes into the nervous, autonomous, uh, autonomic uh, nervous system. And when that happens, all right, you have what we call neuroinflammation. You have what we call neurodegeneration. And when that happens, disease come about. And this is a very classic example to show you that Parkinson disease people, Parkinson disease people, okay, about 70 to 80%, it actually starts from the gut. That means the first problem of the disease starts from the intestine, large intestine, slowly, slowly migrate to the brain, leading to Parkinson. All right? So Parkinson is not just a genetic disease, but it's also an immunological disease. Immunological is the brain disease, is the genetic disease. It is also an immunological disease. So if today, if this person, the Parkinson person, all right, is able to do a detox fast enough, then the immunological uh, uh, trigger, immunological trigger, is, is triggered by the uh, bad protein. Then if you can remove it fast enough, then you will not have Parkinson. So that's how we think. Or even for assisting Parkinson patient, all right, what, what you can do for assisting Parkinson patient, what you can do is that you just need to reduce those inflammation that is inside the brain and causing you to have more damage to your human brain. And, and, and it's a progressive disease. Parkinson is a progressive disease. It only can get worse and worse and worse. You will never get back, back better. If you don't take any drugs, you don't take any medicine, Parkinson, it is a deliberating diseases. It only can get worse and worse until death. And in fact, it is a death sentence, Parkinson. But it's a, it's a slow death sentence. So here, I just, we just want to reiterate that, you know, synucleopathy means, you know, it is uh, it's a protein that actually are able to destroy your nerve cell, all right, redu uh, reducing the function of your nerve cell, okay, by going from the gut to the brain, all right, and then it causes neuroinflammation. That's what we're trying to say here, okay, and it can pass through the blood-brain barrier amazingly. Most of the molecule or most of the disease uh, markers, they cannot pass through the brain, but for this uh, uh, particular bad protein, it can pass through the brain. And that's how Parkinson's disease starts. So, okay, everything is not necessarily about brain inflammation. It all starts from intestine inflammation to systemic and to even neuroinflammation. So all this thing is well documented by scientists. And uh, you know, the best way to really combat these diseases is really to understand how it starts and why it starts. If you can understand how it starts and why it starts, then half the battle is won, isn't it? So this is another diagram just to show you that, you know, there is this cell survival and cell death, all right? So under normal circumstances, right, I just want to draw your attention on the left diagram. 
the normal circumstances. There is this thing called autophagosome. So let's imagine that is this word called autophagosome, all right, which is like a rubbish truck. It's just basically come and collect all the rubbish, including the toxic material, including the inflammatory molecule. Inflammatory molecule is toxic, is, is considered a waste. Inflammation is considered a waste. And you must remove the waste. You must inf remove the inflammation. So under normal people, you are able to actually form, a, you see, there's this thing called fusion. Fusion means it's able to combine with a lysosome, which is an enzyme. So there's the enzyme inside a normal person's brain to digest whatever is found in the rubbish truck, which is the autophagosome. So under normal circumstances, then the, that is what we call the autolysosome, means the waste material will break down or the inflammation material will break down inside the brain. That is only necessary and it is necessary and it is, it is important. But for people with problem of what we call brain detoxification, it's a classic example. If you look at the right hand side, a person who cannot do brain detoxification, what will happen? So basically, they also have the autophagus. They also have the rubbish truck. But it is not able to do a fusion. You can see it's a cross. It's not able to fuse with the enzyme. Or sometimes in most in certain cases, we don't even have the enzyme. So in any instances, the lacking of the enzyme to digest the poison or the toxin or the inflammation molecule inside the rubbish truck, then what happened? Forever, there is no removal of waste forever there is accumulation and more and more and more inflammation more and more toxin more and more poison inside your brain what will happen to the nerve cell the nerve cell will have to die because you know there is so much waste there is so much toxin so the only result is brain cell death leading to brain death eventually so this is the classic example of brain detoxification which class do you want to belong do you want to belong to the normal people? Or do you want to belong to those people who have the capticine inhibition? In this case, it's an abnormal brain. It's your choice, right? But as we age, we lose the function of normal situation and we'll go into the right-hand side. And in order for us not to go into the right-hand side, that's why the NGF, Avita NGF invention is so important for you because it allows you to address the issue it allows you to have normal brain detoxification. Next, I'd like to draw your attention on growth factors. Basically, you know, when we are young, we have a lot of growth factors because we're all growing. But when we age, all right, we realize that a lot of growth factors or what we call growth factors related to the different types of nerve cells. Growth factors is like nutrition. All right, so the nutrition to an aging body is less and less. And as when it's accessible to the aging body, it's less and less. And as it's less and less, what will happen is that we will go into an irreversible, what we call a, a senescence. Senescence means loss of function. And we, I, I mentioned to you, we only have one brain. And when the brain goes into senescence, that's the end of us. So we only have one brain, okay, the choice of whether you want to regenerate your brain is yours because the brain cannot regenerate by itself. The brain cannot be regenerated by itself. It can only be regenerative through certain things that you do to your body. I will explain to you how. But aging deprives you of the growth factors that you need for your nerve cells. And that is this diagram to show you. Right? In order for us to have good cell survival, we need good BDNF. And this BDNF is like neutron molecule. Could be present in an extract, could be present in an NGF. All right? But the thing is that most of them are present in the pro-PDNF, means you know, it is in the raw form, which is a toxic form, actually. If it's not converted to the active form, the pro-BDNF, you can see pro-BDNF, if, if it's not converted to PDNF, then this pro-BDNF is toxic to you. And if it's toxic to you, it will lead to cell death, yeah? apoptosis. Next, NGF, same thing, all right? So whatever I'm going to show you here is whether it's NGF, PDNF, G GDF, whatever. It is stand for a, a, some form of growth factor. It is some form of, because we have different nerve cells. And different nerve cells need different 
protein, need different nutrients, need different growth factors. Okay, it is the same thing that I explained. Okay, here is another diagram to show you GDNF, which is related to uh, 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 Alzheimer, dementia. Dementia patient has been shown, or even a Parkinson patient, has been shown to have very, very less amount of GDNF. So, you know, what we need to do then, of course, you know, if we understand that if it's established that it is important, then we need to actually replace Parkinson brains or even uh, 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 dementia brain with more of this GDNF. And this could only be present in a purified form, pure forms, extract form, not from any other sources. Okay, so here is just to show you that it is directly linked for Parkinson's disease is directly linked to a lacking or deficiency of GDNF. So what we need to do is to replace GDNF in Parkinson patient. Okay, here I just want to, you know, quickly go through you that, you know, how we know that, you know, certain protein is lacking in certain disease, certain growth factor is lacking. There is a map. For scientists, we know this, map, but it's not necessary for you to know, but just to let you know that scientists know. You not necessary to know. So you just need to depend on what the scientists tell you. So if the scientists tell you that, okay, you need G GDNF, if the scientists tell you that you need BDNF, you, you need NGF, there's why, there's why we, 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 we tell you, because we know that there is, there is a, there's a map for us to guide us, right? So that's where I'm going to tell you now. So again, here is, you know, just to show you supporting evidences, scientific evidences to show you that we need extra dietary uh, uh, supplement. We need supplement to help us to overcome brain aging, to overcome brain degeneration. We need to have brain regeneration. So aging lead to planting of brain function. Again, as I said, planting of the brain function. Aging causes neurodegeneration. Aging results in less neural protection. So these two things. So you have less, you have more degeneration means you lost more function. And not only that, you have less of the protection. And that means more cells will die. More brain cells will die. And remember just now one thing. How many brains do we have? We have only one brain. And once the brain is gone, it is gone. And most of the time, it's re irreversible, most of the time. So it's important for us to protect it, to maintain it while it is functional. And I think here, I just want to let you know, again, you know, how does the birth of Evita and GF comes about? Because we want to let you know that we want to enable you, every one of us, whether you are sick, you have Parkinson, you have dementia, or whether you are well, we want to help you to repair the effects of aging, to repair the effects of inflamed cell, to repair the effects of injured cell. That happens every day, every second. And it helps to restore the function of your brain because there's only one brain. And once the function is gone, then it's gone. It helps you to connect it better with your autonomic nervous system. Although today, we didn't talk really about no autonomic nervous system because the focus is on brain detoxification, but it's equally important. It's the same principle. It happens for the brain, it happens for your autonomic nervous system as well. And of course, it activates your autonomic active cells. So now allow me to uh, run quickly, right? And um, to say that, you know, among the NGF product, why is it we call it a synergistic formula? Because it's not about one plus one equals to two. It's about one plus one equals to 11. One plus one it could even be equals to 100. It is a synergistic effects of individual components combined together to give you a multiplier effect. And that is why it's important. So you cannot just eat in ingredients in, in isolation. You must eat them together. And the only, only thing that actually combine them together is in the product. A Vita NGF. But I need to let you know the individual components. So one of them is edible bird's nest. And it's proprietary because it is the way the extract is extracted from the bird's nest. It's not just bird's nest, but it's extract, bioactive components that can give you a genetic effect, that can give you an immunological effect, a benefit. It can also give you a regenerative benefit. Remember just now I told you? In order for us to have good brain, to maintain a good brain, there are genetical uh, way 
there is immunological way, and also there is regenerative way. So why is this so? Why is it that we, we, we use birds' nest as a source of all these, uh, uh, what we call bioactive molecules? Because there is a, a studies from NUS, a National University of Singapore, to show that you can see that on the left-hand side, the diagram, right, among many foods studied, more than 100 types of food, edible birds' nest, EBN, as you can see from the first column, it has the highest number, uh, what we call concentration of amino acids, not number, it's concentration of amino acid, you know, among all the food study. You can see that it's a 439.15, easily outperform all the rest of the food, including milk that we drink, the egg that we eat every day, including infant formula. Again, of course, to make up what we call the bioactive molecule, besides the protein, there is also this simple sugar, uh, not, di not, not glucose, not diabetic sugar. It is our simple sugar. This simple sugar may not cause diabetic. The, this, even for that, you need good sugar. You need good sugar, all right? And, and, and edible birds' nest has very high content of sugar, all right? Uh, it actually ranks among, uh, uh, highly, uh, also among those foods that we studied. Okay, the only one that is uh, probably higher is infant formula because infant formula needs, is, is, is for growing child. You need a lot of energy and therefore you need a lot of sugar. But other than that, you know, in order for us to form bioactive molecules needed for neural function, you need good sugar, you need good protein, and EBN is a good source. Edible bird nest is a good source of all those protein and sugar. Here is just to let you know how does the sugar and the protein, amino acid, combine together to give you what we call the bioactiveness of the, of the, uh, uh, of the molecule. All right, so this is just to let you know a diagram to show you how does bird nest extracts helps you in the cellular function, All right? You don't need to know how does it do, but I just want to let you know, we scientists, we already know how is bird nest bioactive molecule going to help you, going to benefit you from the genetic, from the immunological, as well as from the regenerative aspect. And of course, you have purple chokeberry. Purple chokeberry has, is, is shown to give you genetic and immunological benefit. If you really want to study the science, come and have a lesson with me. Okay, and I can bore you with all the scientific details, all right, uh, scientific papers on how purple chokeberry can give us genetic and immunological benefits. And you have pacopa extracts, which is good for genetic, good for immunological, good for regenerative benefits, especially for memory. All right, for people who want good memory, Bacopa extract, it is a very, very good bioactive ingredient. And if it's found inside this synergistic formula, it will even enhance the effect of on its own, than on its own. Sage extract, very good for regenerative benefit, okay? Show there are some benefit on Alzheimer's disease, memory loss, depression, okay? And of course, in metabolism in general. Nettokinase is very well known in Japan, more well known for heart, but there's also now increasing, increasing evidence to show that it is important for Alzheimer's disease, okay, in an immunological benefit, right? Immunological means, in a way, you know, you can reduce neural inflammation and brain detoxification. Beta crooked, another one that is shown to give good immunological benefit. Again, as long as immunological benefit, you can say is related to brain detox. Brain detox, it is all about immunological benefits. So that is how this is a lab, or you know, how we actually come up with all those extracts. We did not just take the powder and then we take the plant and then we grind it to powder. It's not as simple as that. You have to go through a proprietary extraction processes. And that is done in our lab. All right, and uh, yeah, it, it is proprietary. It is done in our lab. It is done in Singapore, and we are very proud to have those proprietary extraction processes. Next, I like to talk to you that you know, okay, there's the same context, you know, that you know, in order for a brain to function, okay, I want to let you know that you know the NGF solution, which is the Avita NGF, the brain decline to nerve decline. It is all about activating the gene promotion, the gene pro promoting survival of the nerve cell, as compared to the gene that promote cell death. So it's about a balance. It's about cell survival versus cell death. So if you can actually 
promote more of cell survival gene than cell death gene, then you are bingo. You actually will have a regenerative brain. You will have, in general, a regenerative brain rather than a neural de degrading brain, neural degeneration or neural degradation brain. So here is an example from a cell level, in vitro level, to show you, okay, evidences, you know, that, you know, if you, if you have a normal brain, all right, with uh, NGF, for example, or Parkinson brain cells with NGF, normal, normal brain without NGF, Parkinson's with NGF, and it's very clear. Evidence show that the NGF solution, which is Avita NGF, you know, protects normal nerve cells better than without the NGF product. So for normal people, there is a clear benefit. And for Parkinson patient, there is also a very clear benefit. So whether you are normal people or whether you are Parkinson patient or even with other diseases, NGF can help you. NGF definitely can help you because it has a very clear neural protective function as well as a neural regenerative function. So here, I just want to show you the difference between proliferation and differentiation. Okay, now in our mature brain, there is what we call specialized brain cell. We have many, many types of specialized brain cell. We call them, they have already passed through what we call university. I'll give you a layman term, primary school and university. All right, so in our brain, all the cells are in university stage. That means they are no longer primary school, they are university stage. But then, the thing is that, you know, when there is an injury, there is a need for you to go back to the basis, which is the primary school. It is only when you are in the primary school, you can generate and proliferate uh, much more faster than specialized. Because specialized cells cannot divide fast. Only when it's young cells, you can divide fast, or what we call neural stem cell. So you must have a good combination of specialized cell as well as stem cell. All right, as well as stem cell in your brain, as well as the autonomic nervous system. So that is where proliferation and differentiation, you have to understand. All right, you need both. You don't just need specialized cell, but you need proliferative cell. You don't need just differentiated and specialized cell. You also need proliferative cell. That means actively dividing cell. You need actively dividing cells. So, all right, just want to let you know, in order for us to recover, to repair, you need cell proliferation. You do not need cell differentiation. So when you have a Parkinson disease, what you need most is not more of the brain specialized cell. You need more of the, what we call the stem cells, the progenitor cells, more than the specialized cell. Because specialized cells, there is a limited amount. But if you have proliferative cell, you can keep on multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. New cell to replace those damaged numbers, you understand, or those injured numbers. It's important, it's important. And that's what we call regenerative. If you, if you do not have the ability to replace and to repair, then there is no regenerative potential in your brain. So here, we have shown a diagram to show you, right? Basically, first, if you take NGF, if you take the Vita NGF, for example, there is a very clear evidence that you see here for the green column that it is very, very close to the medical standard, which is a, a, a ability for you to proliferate your brain cells. Proliferate your brain cells. Yeah, so here is a diagram to show you, okay, the ratio between uh, proliferation and differentiation. So under normal circumstances, we have very good differentiation, but we don't have proliferation. So in this case, if you see the NGF on the center lane, you have a very clear of, you know, the, um, um, the KI67 over the beta tupelin. So the one that is in the purple one is called proliferation, and the other one is called differentiation. So you must have more proliferation over differentiation, in other words. And only when you have NGF, it allows you to do it. Because if you don't have that, you have no regeneration power inside your brain. So here is to show you that, you know, under normal circumstances, you go through a cell cycle, it's like a nerve cell. The nerve cell, actually, when it becomes specialized or it becomes differentiation, it exits, you see the word G0, 
G0 means it exits from the cell cycle, and if the moment it exits from the cell cycle, it's like it becomes a university graduate. It cannot go back to the primary school already. That means it cannot, it cannot, it stops dividing. In other words, it stops dividing, and when it stops dividing, it means you stop regenerating. You cannot regenerate anymore. Also, when you cannot regenerate anymore, the brain will be in trouble when it's a disease strike or when an injury strike. So it is important for us to have replacement. And in order for us to have replacement, there must be proliferation. That means the cell must go back to the cell cycle and start dividing. So here is very clear cut. You have the left hand side and the right hand side. So we want to stop the differentiation. We want to have more proliferation. Under normal circumstances, when a person goes into a disease like stroke, depression, anything else, okay, they stop proliferation. So when there's no proliferation, then there is no new cell to divide and give you new nerve cell, no more new nerve cell. And when that happens, you, there is no way you can recover from a disease. And even if you are well, you want to maintain a high level of stem cell inside your brain because you want to be constantly young and keep on proliferating rather than just having a high dose of specialized cells. So here is just an example to show you that, you know, uh, yeah, with the evidence of NGF, the, the product, uh, evidence of NGF, it shows very clear proliferation over the differentiation or specialization, and that is important. Okay, so with that, I just want to let you know that Brain detoxification is extremely important and it cannot go away without having a good uh, method, okay, especially in this new invention called Evita NGF. So with Evita NGF, you have what we call brain detoxification. You actually addresses genetic issues related to brain disorders and nervous disorder, nervous system disorder. You actually have immunological benefit you actually have regenerative benefit with all this benefit all present in this invention. So I just hope that every one of you can take advantage of this invention and help many more people, not just people who are sick, not just the 1 billion people, but the other 6 billion people, everyone in this world should be exposed to NGF, should be exposed to this Evita NGF. All right. So if you think that you have benefited from this product, I just hope that you can spread the new, good news around to the friends that you love most, to people around the world that need this product. Thank you very much, and I'll take questions from the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Lim, for such a fantastic sharing. And indeed, later on, Professor Lim, we will be sharing some of these fantastic stories of NGF across uh, the region. But before we do so, we have room for a few questions, and these are the questions that were sent to us earlier, even before the session. I know we have quite a number of questions that are uh, flooding our chats at the moment. Don't worry. Our staff will also um, uh, post the link, uh, and then we will get back to all those uh, questions as soon as we can. But let me address some of the questions, Professor Lim, that has been sent to us prior for tonight. Uh, first is a question from Amy Chong. Um, she is a breast cancer um, patient due to chemotherapy. Um, it has caused numbness in the fingers and palms, as well as in the sole of her feet. So her question is, uh, would NGF uh, be able to help in the repair of such uh, nerve cells? Professor Lim? Thank you, uh, Gina, for the question, and Amy, uh, 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 for, the, for the question. Um, if you have listened to me uh, discuss on the uh, slides earlier on, it is very clear to us that the product of Evita NGF, it is invented to specifically repair and regenerate damaged nerve cell. All right. Although it is not, it is not. Uh, uh, I would say. Uh, shown in a very uh, em emphatical way, okay, but it is definitely showing scientifically that without a shadow of a doubt, 
it can help people to repair damaged nerve cells. Okay, now you've been taking Celogen, which is a great cell regeneration product. It can complement with NGF, which actually specifically target nerve cells. All right, so my answer to you is that um, take NGF in good moderation, and I feel that it can actually help you in your uh, uh, in your uh, cell therapy uh, 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 as a complementary uh, uh, approach. All right, so um, uh, I want to encourage you to actually take this product for a certain period of time, a minimum of about three months, to see some significant, meaningful impact. Okay, I'm not saying that this product is not effective after one month. I'm not saying that. Uh, some people will experience good effect even after two weeks. But because, you know, every one of us, we are built differently. Some will take longer. Some will take uh, what we call uh, shorter. But in the general rule of thumb, three months should be sufficient for you to see very clear uh, effect. And you will see that you, you have a lot of nerve cells being repaired. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another question um, here sent to us earlier. If a child of two years suffers from fits, uh, which the doctors are unable to identify the cause, um, can he be given NGF uh, for such condition, Professor Lim? Yes. Thank you again for the question. Now, first of all, we really have to understand, okay, that uh, fits, all right, uh, it may not be well understood medically yet. So that's why a lot of doctors are not able to identify the cause. Or even scientifically, uh, it takes time. But here we are not to actually find the solution to the cause. Okay, what we want to do is really to help people suffering from the impact as a result of fits. I don't know whether you understand. So even though we do not know the origin or what is the reason causing fits, but it's important for us to see how we can address and reduce the impact, the negative impact brought out by fits. And NGF is invented precisely for that. It may not cure the person from fits, as I mentioned. It may or may not, it depends on time. But at this moment in time, if you were to take NGF diligently, then you will see that your child will no longer suffer from fits. That is what I want to tell you. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you. We have um, another question um, from a mother. Um, can NGF help with overactive children? I think many of us mothers can relate to that. <laughs> I also have overactive children. So... Yeah, can Angie help, help them with overactive children, Professor Lin? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question again. Well, I, I just want to let you know, I'm also the father of uh, hyperactive children. But it really depends on how you define hyperactive. <laughs> it's very subjective. But NGF, okay, as I mentioned just now, okay, it is a product with a composition of bioactive composition that is able, it's not a single molecule. It is a composition of molecule. But inside the composition, there are what we call relevant, relevant molecules that can potentially calm down children because anything that cause hyperactive, it must be related to the nerve. It must be related to what we call uh, nerve physiology. What is nerve physiology? Nerve physiology is about the nerve response, all right, to external factors, all right? So you will understand that what are the things that can cause, what are the external factors that can cause nerve to respond? It can be either way. It can either 
make it more active or make it less active. Remember just now I mentioned there are genes, there are hyperactive genes. That is also what we call the hypo. Hypo means lower. Uh, hyper means over. Hypo means underactive. So the key here is to find the balance and to activate the hypoactive, which is the underactive genes inside the children in the long run. So if you ask me this question, then yes, because NGF could actually bring about a balance. So if you are under a hypoactive mode, we can bring down from hyperactive to less than hyperactive. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Hey, that's good news. <laughs> The parents out there. Okay, we have another question here, uh, Professor Lim. Um, who uh, and how can um, we consume NGF? Who do you recommend it to? This is not a medicine. This is what we call a functional food supplement. So if it is a functional supplement, it is applicable to almost everyone, okay, barring what we call maybe an infant, all right? So I think for any child high, uh, uh, above two years old, provided that she can swallow, until to any person who can be up to 115 years old, I think that is applicable. So who can take? Almost everyone. For pregnant mothers, you take in your own choice. From scientific point of view, even pregnant mothers should be able to take. Okay, but the choice is yours. We don't want to promote uh, activity to pregnant mothers. But other than that, all right, is there any counter uh, uh, indication? This is a food, all right? So I cannot say for sure that 100% of the people can take it. This is like rice. It's just like milk. It's just like seafood. Some of us are allergic to seafood, to milk. Am I right? That does that mean to say that milk or even seafood, most of the people cannot take. So I cannot say that 100% of the people can take this, but I can say that almost everyone can take it. Subject to the fact that you are not hypersensitive to any components of the uh, NGF ingredients. But the ingredients that we have used so far has, has not shown to have any hypersensitivity on anyone. So I think I can say that almost everyone can take this product. How to take this product? So we actually devised a three month uh, 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 program. All right, you take a three month, a uh, uh, program and each day, right? Normal people just take one capsule a day, okay? Uh, should be taken at night, all right? Uh, after dinner or even before the sleep. Okay, so that is how you take it. For people with some uh, problems or health, health issues, any health issue, okay? Then you take two a day, all right? Uh, for more serious people, Right, for people with uh, very serious Parkinson, dementia, even um, uh, multiple, uh, multiple uh, uh, cirrhosis, for example, then, then you can actually take four capsules a day. For people with cap kidney problem, for example, then uh, are they suitable? Well, although this product is a high protein uh, product, but it's not really on protein, it is on peptide. It is on small peptide, which can be easily handled by the kidney as well. So even for kidney patient, I think you are okay in general, just to take one or two, even four, but not more than four. All right. Then other, other group of people like the young children with, with uh, uh, autism or, or, or dialectic or whatever, whatever problem, they also can take. Okay, maybe you can start with one a day, then followed by two. As I say again, do not go more than four per day. Thank you.
All right. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Lim. I think you're going to be very busy over the next few days. There's a lot of questions, so we're going to send it to you. And we're very glad that you are um, with us to explain further about NGF and brain detoxification. Thank you so much, Professor Lin, for spending your time with us. Um, and then uh, we hope to see you again very soon here in a Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Thank you. Lin.